Hi, I'm Dr. Beverly Yin Thompson and I'm your instructor for Sociology of the Family. In this short video, I just wanted to talk about chapter two of our textbook, The Family by Cohen. And so this chapter goes over very briefly just the entire uh, history of the United States since this colonial American time period. And they really do try to focus also on the indigenous population that was here before white settlers came. And so they do talk about white European and European Americans primarily, but also try to talk about the different diverse groups within American society, especially historically, because we can see that over the history of this country, the different demographic groups based on race and ethnicity have had quite a different experience within our culture. So one of the largest changes in the early period of American history that contributes to our contemporary experience of the family is the decline in fertility as well as the rise of women working outside of the household. As women had fewer children, they could then work outside of the family. And not only could they work outside of the household, but they really needed to because of the changing atmosphere of the workforce. So for example, for white women who might have worked more within the home during this um, separate spheres kind of phase where uh, women were more responsible for child rearing when men went out to work in the factories, um, you know, for black women and for indigenous women, for Asian women, they just didn't have this privilege of having a husband that was making enough money to earn a family wage. And then the chapter turns to the modern family starting in the 1900s through the 1960s. And they talk about this time period as really changing from marriage and family formations being just a necessity for survival into this concept of uh, the romantic relationship, the companion re relationship. I also included a link to Stephanie Kuntz's lecture on um, the way we would never were about the history of um, American families versus just this kind of stereotype of um, this 1950s ideal of family life that didn't quite ever exist. But she talks about how family life and marriage used to be more about uniting uh, specific wealthy families and that it was a decision of the parents of these children. But now coming into this modern family, we see this ideology of um, choice, basically. But the, ideo the ideal of this choice within choosing one spouse was always more of an ideal than the actual reality. And so the reality is somewhere between this ideal of equality and companionship versus um, this kind of patriarchal, unequal structure that continues to exist. And we might point to things just that um, perhaps the man um, makes more money than his, um, his wife. And so these kinds of things continue to lead to gender imbalances within heterosexual families, for example. And so one of the things you can see on page 56, they just talk about the changing demographics as far as at what age people had their first marriage. And you see that really um, in the early 1900s, 1890s even, um, the ages were close to what they are now, but it was really the 1950s and 60s where it took quite a dip as far as people getting married a lot younger during this baby boom uh, period post-war. And then the rest of the chapter really talks about just the change of the modern family and this um, move towards independence. And so therefore marriage and entering into these kinds of contractual arrangements, these kinds of institutions, as it becomes more optional, people are gonna make different kinds of decisions. And so we see the peak in the 1950s with this nuclear family and these married couples um, for how much time they spend within um, their marriages. And so nowadays we see people perhaps living um, without getting married, having children um, inside marriage or outside of marriage, not having children at all, um, and having the freedom to choose to get married, the freedom to choose not to get married, and the freedom for divorce if we're gonna be now basing our family and um, marriages based on romantic love. What happens when that romantic love disappears? Um, then divorce becomes uh, a lot more popular of, a, of an option. 
The chapter on page 71 covers another important topic, which is um, the family name. Previously, historically, before the 1970s, it was very rare, they state, for women, for American wives not to assume the family surname of their husbands. No laws regulated this practice one way or another until the 1970s, when laws did come about that either required women to take their husband's name, made it optional, or um, uh, other alternatives. And so this is pretty significant because it's, it's quite shocking to me that it seems 90% of uh, American women still take their husband's name. But other alternatives exist as well. Women might retain their own um, family name, they might hyphenate their name, their husbands might hyphenate their name with same-sex marriages, perhaps couples hyphenate their name or have other arrangements. But then how does this impact the naming of the children? What family name do the children have and so on? And so then they, they also just talk about um, trends to watch out for in the future and talking about the urban environment and how when people live in urban environments in a lot more density, uh, this also shifts just the formation of the families. Um, we see older people living a lot more isolated and alone. People move a lot more uh, further across country to take up jobs and, and raise their families. And so you might have these family relationships, especially with grandparents, becoming a lot more optional, whereas previously grandparents might have lived within the family, provided child care for um, their grandchildren and so on. So the chapter concludes on page 74 with some key terms. And so definitely look over this list and make sure that you can um, define all of these key terms. And then of course the questions for review on page 75 will provide you a really good and thorough understanding of the content of this chapter. So thank you and I'll see you in chapter three.